get some things off my chest Tough times, I hope y'all holding up We gon' be high cause we always is But I'm feeling like this How many mothers have to cry? How many brothers gotta die? How many more times? How many more times? How many more marches? When they killing mine, they'll try to justify it. Oh, each and every time. Playing in the park, taking you a jog, sitting on the couch in your own house. Never seen a matter what we do. You think we don't matter, but we do. You got a problem, cause the city on fire. Let the soul about that body that we bury. Good morning to everyone who is streaming in as well as listening to us on our prayer line. We are excited to be on live today. We would like to make a few mentions of some announcements that are coming up here at this branch of Zion. On next Sunday, again next Sunday, June 21st, 2020, which is Father's Day, we will have praise on the parking lot. We are extremely excited to welcome all of our members back to church. Church will take place again in the parking lot. There will be no indoor service at all. We are asking that you all come and please pay attention to the parking attendants. Our cars will be six feet apart from left to right, and you must, again, you must remain in your car for the duration of service. Service will be shortened on next Sunday, just as it is on today no longer than 30 minutes and if it rains again if it does rain service will be streamed online and offered on the phone as we always do so even if it rains a little bit there will be no service next sunday only online and by phone next sunday is father's day so we are doing father's day recognition if you would like to honor your father or a father figure or have a memorial slide in place for exit contact quitting case. Please, please get your submissions in by this Thursday at midnight. Again, this Thursday at midnight. If they are submitted past the due date, they will not be included. You can inbox us on Facebook, YouTube, or on our church website, or you can email your picture in kind words to 1865 SUBC at gmail.com. It is that time of year again where we do offer our scholarship for freshmen all the way up to seniors attending a four-year or two-year undergraduate institution. This is only, again, only for Second Union Baptist Church members. You can pick up your application by stopping on the church parking lot between 10 to noon, or you can pick them up next Sunday during our drive through service. You must have those mailed, again, mailed by July 19th. We are, due to COVID-19, we are not taking them in person. You must mail them Sunday, July 19th is the cutoff date to Miss Ruby Morrell. Throughout this entire month, we will be highlighting our 2020 high school graduates. We would like to honor Lamaya Cowan. She is a graduate of Goochland High School. She will be attending Morgan State University in the fall. She will be studying medical technology, monitoring in radiology. We also would like to honor Nijavion Peach Timberlake. He is a graduate of Goochland High School and he will be attending Shenandoah University in the fall. He is majoring in computer science. We are extremely proud of all of our youth here at this branch of Zion and we do wish you both the best as you journey on towards your futures and destiny. Other than that, those have been your announcements for today. We look forward to seeing you all next Sunday and service will start shortly.
good morning to all of you who are watching and listening. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're grateful for this opportunity to bring you a word, and we pray and know that God has been blessing you all week long, and he's still worthy to be praised. Our text for this morning comes from Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 52. Reading from the New Living Translation, you will find these words. For they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. Heavenly Father, we come, dear God, just saying thank you for this another day. We thank you, Father God, for being such a gracious and loving God. We thank you, dear God, for how you've provided for us. We thank you, dear Lord, for how, dear Lord, you've looked over and beyond our faults and continue to supply our each and every need. We thank you for this opportunity, dear God, to bring forth this word, and we ask that you would speak with our lips, think with our mind, hear with our ears. Bless all those who are listening and watching, Father God. We pray that nothing will distract us from hearing from you. Dear Lord, we ask now that you would have thine own way. And when we have completed this assignment, we will not fail to give you all of the honor, glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, Mark chapter 6, verse 52 it says, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. For a few moments, the Lord and I would like to use as a subject or topic, supernatural thinking. Supernatural thinking. Have you ever found yourself to be in a situation that has caused you to panic? We panic when we can't figure out a way out of a situation and we envision the worst. In a crowded theater, the word fire shouted loudly can incite panic. As people look for exits and crowd, crowd owls, each person envisions himself suffocating and dying a horrible death. At that point, many lose control, climb over others, scream, cry, run, punch, and struggle for survival. Many have lost their lives in panicky situations. Not all of them were life-threatening, but they appeared to be. See, crises can prompt the panic, loss of a job or source of income can also be a panic situation. A health emergency can also promote panic. Whenever panic occurs, rational thinking and faith-based actions are difficult to comprehend. Oftentimes, a response made in panic is more dangerous than the threat itself. Generally, we panic out of fear. We see the worst that can happen actually occurring, and we attempt to avoid that situation. When we panic, there is disorder, disunity, distrust, and chaos. Even faith gets challenged when we panic. There may be a personal or family situation that is reaching the panic stage in your life. You may as you may as if you uh, seem like as if you are about to lose it. However, before you push your panic button, why not take the limits off of God, worry about nothing, pray about everything, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. As believers, we have learned that God has an amazing way 
of bringing about extraordinary and astonishing results with little and in some cases nothing to work with. And so before you lose control and become fearful of the appearance of your situation, go boldly to the throne of grace that God may calm your nerves and assist you in your ordeal. Where the text focal point is a situation in which the disciples worried needlessly about storms and troubles when they for forgot the power of the almighty God. See, after performing a great miracle in which he feed 5,000 and people with two fish and five loaves of bread, the disciples were seen aboard a ship tolling and tossing in a storm. Jesus appeared walking on the water. They were amazed at how the wind ceased. John 6, 21 describes this same incident and added a detail the other gospel writers omitted. And immediately they were at the land whether they went. This was not the first time that Jesus had suppressed the storm. Because if you can recall in Mark chapter 4 verse 39 he came to them in the midst of a storm and spoke to the wind saying peace be still and the wind ceased and in chapter 6 he simply came on board their ship and the wind ceased to trouble. The disciples were amazed that not only did Jesus walk on the water and quiet the storm but they immediately zipped over the water to their destination. See, their amazement or wonder is explained in verse 52 because it says, for they considered not the miracle of loaves, neither did they remember the previous time when he silenced the storm. Their hearts were not focused on the power of God and they forgot for a moment what an awesome God they served. My first point today is that never lose focus of the power and ability of the almighty God. See, the disciples had been in Christ's presence when he performed miracles in the past. They should not have been surprised when he performed any miraculous act because they, more than others, should have known his power and and ability. If anyone else should know the power of God and the ability of God, it should be the sincere followers of Jesus the Christ. We should know God so well that when we face storms and difficulties in our life, we don't panic, we don't fear, but we reach for the word of God that we have hidden down inside of our hearts and in in our minds and rest in the favor and the power and the almighty control that our God has in and over our life. See, when something miraculous happens in front of us, we are prompted to ask whether or not it was the real thing or whether it was an accident. If you can remember when Muhammad Ali knocked out Sonny Liston to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Everyone said it was great, but can he do it again? When Venus and Serena Williams won the championship, the world said it was great, but can they do it again? It's one thing to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay on the top. See, staying there requires the ability to make maintain the power and strength exerted to get 
there repeatedly. Well, what about God? If he's blessed us once, can God do it again? If he's opened a door for us that seemed impossibly secured, can he do it again? If he healed us of a sickness in the past, can he do it again? If he once helped us overcome an obstacle in our lives, is he able to do it again? See, many think of God as a genie in a bottle, and when we rub the bottle, the genie grants us three wishes, and once the wishes are used, there is nothing else that we can do. Some lose hope in God who helped them in the past because they feel the circumstances have changed today. There was a major sickness and then there was a terminal sickness now. We were laid off from work then but we are completely out of work today because of the circumstances have changed a bit. We believe that God has somehow used up his power to bless. But let me tell you something today that God did it for us once and God can and will do it for us again. The situation may be different. The situation may be more difficult but God still has the same power that he always had. See, God, God is still our refuge in our strong tower. Situations will change. Situations will differ, but God is still the same. He is the same God we served last year, last month, last week, and his power has not diminished because a new situation has encountered your life. Just because you see trouble that you never experienced, just because it hurts more this time than last time, it may be a new situation but our refuge is still with us God is still a present help in trouble and so what do you do when you can't figure out the why what do you do when you can't figure out what's going on in your life keep trusting in the supernatural abilities of our almighty God supernatural is that thing that an order of existence beyond the visible and observable universe and I like that because God operates in such a miraculous and powerful way that we have to walk by faith and not by sight it's not what you see it's what God is doing behind the scenes that we cannot see but we must believe in in to get through with the ordeal that has encountered our life. What do you do? You keep trusting in God. This is what happened with the disciples. They allowed a situation to become, to allow them to become absent-minded of God's supernatural ability. I said this is what the disciples did. They allowed a situation to cause them to become absent-minded of God's supernatural ability. When things encounter our life, when trouble seemingly is on every side, when it seems like the worst is occurring in our life, we need to learn to stop, set still. And listen to God. Think about what God has done in the past. Think about the situation that he has brought us through. And baby, you and God will get through this situation and ordeal just like you got through the last situation in your life. The question is, do you believe in the supernatural ability of God?
I know we say, yes, we believe, and we read the stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We read the stories of Daniel. We read the stories of, of Noah and, and, and how God blessed him when the flood came. We read the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We read the stories of what God did through Jesus Christ as he walked upon the earth. But do you really believe in the supernatural? When was the last time you contemplated over God's supernatural acts in your life? See, situations, situations that you knew without a doubt in your mind that it was nobody but God and his hand operating behind the scenes that made things happen in your life. God says to get through this season that we are in and to get through the season that we are going into, you must condition yourself to operate and believe in the supernatural. Walking by faith and not by sight. Believing that God can and will do exceedingly and abundantly Seeking God's face faithfully and consistently. You can't believe in the supernatural if you don't get into the word of God and allow the word of God to sink down in your heart. You can't believe in the supernatural without having that faith. And faith comes by hearing, hearing of the word of God. You have to understand that we have to seek his face faithfully and consistently. Reaping the harvest of spiritual seeds and allowing God to pour into you by ingesting his word and quietly setting and listening for his voice. You must believe in the supernatural even to be saved. Do you believe that Jesus was born of a virgin? That's supernatural. Do you believe that he died on the cross? And after he died on the cross, they placed him in the grave. But three days later, he rose from the grave. That's supernatural. Do you believe that he sits on the right hand of the Father interceding for us even today that's supernatural there may be someone out there today that you're not saved you don't know Jesus as your personal savior why not acknowledge his birth acknowledge his death acknowledge his resurrection the Bible tells us that for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal through Christ Jesus we're mindful that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But that's why God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe in the supernatural? Why don't you accept him right where you are? Why don't you acknowledge who he is and be saved? For all that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you believe in the supernatural? Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, supernatural thinking. Do you believe that God can do what no other can do? Until next time, God bless you. We love you in the Lord.